press the bell icon on YouTube and don't miss another update. For Kathak Clutter today, no surprise that I'm holding a couple of sheets from my regular writing pad. But why am I holding a pink paper as well, a fine pink paper, business standard? That is because I'm talking about something that concerns capital markets, financial markets, and also about all of us taxpayers and every citizen of India who has money in India's banks. Because I'm talking about the latest turn in the IBC, the Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code. Uh, this is a code, this was Modi government's most important reform. And I have said this before and I'll say it again and again, a very bold reform. Because Indian capitalism has never understood bankruptcy. Because bankruptcy in India is seen to be a shame. Bankruptcy is bad, but it's not a shame. A business can fail. So one, we should not hide the fact that a business has failed. And second, if a business has failed, what happens to those who that business owes money to? So there has to be a mechanism whereby bankers, suppliers, employees of that business get something paid. For that, IBC was set up with a bunch of laws. So that was done in 2016. The purpose of IBC was that when a company, when banks conclude that they cannot get their loans back from a company, they can go to National Company Law Tribunal, a judicially constituted body, special body, and take a company through the bankruptcy process. And then that NCLT will set up the process. In the process, there will be a resolution professional who will be an outsider, somebody from the world of finance, accountancy, <clears throat> or one of these uh, corporate consultancies who will come and supervise the process. Then there will be a committee of creditors. So people, essentially bankers, who have lent money to that company will form a committee. So they will then negotiate and see what is the value they want to get. And at some point, resolution professional, after satisfying himself, will call for bids from buyers for this bankrupted company. And as bids come, and finally the highest bid is accepted by everybody, then that money that comes from the buyer will then be distributed among all the lenders on the basis that the committee of creditors decides. Now, this whole process was supposed to take place in 270 days because the impression earlier was that in the Indian legal system, this will just go on forever because people will use, misuse the legal process to delay this, 270 days. Now, when that happened, uh, the first thing the Reserve Bank of India did to make an example and to show that this process works and to also check out the creases in the system, they declared a list of 12 biggest loan defaulters in the Indian banking system. So you can call it a list of dirty dozen, although that's not my prefer preferred expression. A company going bankrupt goes bankrupt. Donald Trump has gone bankrupt twice. He's the pres president of America and the most powerful man in the world. So really, real capitalist countries do not see any shame in bankruptcy. In India, we do. And that's why in India, <coughs> even the bankrupt try to brazen it out. So these 12 companies were referred to uh, the... IBC process, uh, in insolvency and bankruptcy process in June 2017, two years back. Uh, some have been sold uh, and banks have recovered a fair bit of money, which is a very good thing. Some have gone into liquidation because nobody came to buy them. Some, there is some issues going on and some haven't got sufficient uh, price yet on them, but some have dragged the process through litigation. Uh, exactly the intention of what exactly was the intention, intention of the IBC was to avoid. So let me read the list of these dozen. I'm not saying dirty dozen because I don't think failure in business is dirty. It's normal. It's not good, but it's normal. So one, and I will also read out the amounts that they had owed at that point to the banking system. Bush and Steel, 44,478 crores. Lanco Infratech, remember the big infrastructure company, at one point uh, it was seen to be among the fastest growing infrastructure companies in the world, 44,364 crores. SR Steel, owned by the Ruya family, 37,000, 
284 crores and we'll come back to it. Bhushan Power and Steel from the same promoters as the first one, 37,248 crores. Alok Industries, 22,075 crores. Amtec Auto, 14,074 crores. Monet Path, 12,115 crores. Electro Steel, Steels Limited, 10,275 crores. Era Infra Engineering, 10,000 65 crores, JP Infratech 9,635 crores, just next door to Delhi, you know, Noida, Greater Noida, uh, EBG Shipyards 6,953 crores and Jyoti Structures 5,165 crores. These 12 companies at that point accounted for about 25% of all of the bad loans in the banking system. So these were really the big boys. And I know I'm saying the big boys, but I'm sure my feminist friends will not complain also about my not sort of correcting that because uh, these are not really boys that you want to identify with too much. Now, what's happened here is that some have been sold, as I said, Bhushan Steel, for example, Bhushan Group companies have been sold to the Tatas. They are doing better already. Monetis Path has been sold to GSW, Jindal Group, they are doing better. Many others have held out. But the standout case here is SR Steel. Why is SR Steel important? One, because it's a very large company and it's a very large loan. And many banks are involved, led by the State Bank of India. Second, as the process started, the steel industry came through a revival globally. Steel prices picked up, steel demand picked up, and suddenly what was, because commodities business is cyclical. So steel cycle turned upwards. So this became a valuable business again. So one, banks were getting a good price from a buyer, which in this case was Arcelor Mittal, Lakshmi Mittal who lives in London. Uh, he made a bid of 42,000 crores plus for this company. So essentially banks will recover most of their money, in fact more. But the promoters themselves, the Ruyas, who had earlier defaulted, they thought now this business had become so profitable that they could raise the money and repay their loans and start running their company again. Now that in again a settled capitalist society with where people accept these principles of capitalism, principally they would not have been a problem. Even a promoter himself can buy his broken company if he can find the money. But in India, where capitalism is still maturing, public opinion would never have expect, accepted this, that somebody who has gone bankrupt, stopped paying his banks, suddenly the commodity cycle gets better, so he comes back and pays back and buys his own company. That was not going to be accept, accepted. So Modi government in the first term amended the law to ensure that owners themselves, after they had been sent to bankruptcy process, could not buy back their companies. So that is where SR owners had a setback. But then they went through, they used, they went for appeal in the tribunal because over NCLT, National Company Law Tribunal, there is a National Company Law Appellate Tribunal. They failed there, they went to the Supreme Court, they went to a high court. Uh, so th through this court process, this SR Steel case has now gone on for 600 days plus. And that is what was causing a great deal of stress in the system because once it became evident that the Ruya family had gamed the new IBC system. Others also learned from them and they thought if they have gamed it, why can't I? And this is not a few companies between January, March 2016 and Jan 2017, banks referred another 1858 companies to the IBC process. Then more were referred and more were referred. In fact, this has now become such a big process that just earlier this year, 27 more judges were sworn in for NCLT. So NCLT now has more judges than the Supreme Court of India, many more judges than the Supreme Court of India because there is so much resolution to be done of bad loans. So if one had been stuck like this, others would have followed the same example and delayed the process. And that would have, one, uh, scuppered this big reform and second, once again given Indian businesses a bad name and would have finally driven the banks completely 
bankrupt because after all, how long can the government pay them? So the latest provocation and the reason we are talking now is that SR, in the SR case, the NCLAT, judge in the NCLAT gave an order just earlier this week saying that of the money that will be paid to buy the company by the new buyer, kind of proportionate amount will be also paid out to operational creditors of the company. That means banks who had lent the company money against the security and somebody who might have sold them fuel or somebody who might have sold them vehicles or somebody who might have sold them whatever, uh, suppliers will also get on the same basis. That was not acceptable for the committee of creditors, which is the banks. So they now went to Supreme Court and it became evident that this, this will now go to court and take several months after that. So Modi government now, uh, if you see in the papers today, they have now amended the insolvency and bankruptcy code in such a way that this delay now cannot happen. So they have given primacy to those creditors who have lent money against security, essentially the banks. The committee of that creditors will then decide what to give to whom because there is a seniority process and there is a hierarchy of lenders. Also within that committee or among the lenders, if some don't agree, once 50%, more than 50% agree, everyone else's assent is to be taken for granted. So these things and commercial considerations will drive the resolution process. So banks have to try and get the best value and whatever gets in the best value, including mergers and acquisitions in this process, they are now authorized to do it. And most importantly now, these new amendments say that even if there is litigation at whatever level, they have extended the term from 270 days by another 60 days, so 330 days. But even if you go to courts, whatever courts, all this has to be done in 330 days. And even while, even while litigation may be going on, the resolution process also goes on, so there are no delays. So overall, very good reform on top of a reform that was being blocked by old businessmen gaming the system. This is a good answer to uh, those subverting the insolvency and bankruptcy process. It is good for the banks, it is good for the taxpayer, it is good for the honest borrower because honest borrower has to now pay a penalty of in terms of higher interest for bad loans uh, by people uh, who run their businesses badly and, and even block uh, the bankruptcy process. And also it is good for Indian capitalism because for Indian capitalism to mature in my opinion, people have to see businessmen go bankrupt, go bankrupt, uh, banks will recover their money. Some might have a feeling of vengeance, but more importantly, you will see many of these businessmen again dust their knees and get up and start something new or rebuild their lives and entrepreneurship. So to reach a, pro a state where, where you don't find bankruptcy embarrassing, or shameful, you first have to see a whole bunch of genuine, clean bankruptcies.